The Halo TV Show. The absolute roller coaster of emotions that this show has taken the Halo fandom on over the years is something that needs to be studied, and it's all seemingly culminating with season two of the show, which is set to describe and showcase the fall of Reach, a significant lore moment in the Halo lore. This is the thing that kicks off the events of the original trilogy. It has its own game, as well as a separate novel that tells a different perspective on these same events. The Fall of Reach to the Covenant Forces is one of the most significant and remembered moments in all of Halo. But the conversation surrounding Season 2 doesn't seem to be centered on that. Instead, it's on the angel discussion that we've had back even in Season 1 of the Halo show about Master Chief keeping his damn helmet on. Now, why is this important? Why is this significant? Because to me, it is the clearest indication that the people in charge, at least, of the story and the world building of the Halo show do not understand Halo. Now, generally speaking, when you're making an adaptation of something, it could be viewed as a benefit to understand what you are adapting so that you're able to recontextualize and transfer the emotions and the gravitas from the original work into whatever new medium you're adapting it to. Whether that be from book to show, book to movie, game to movie, game to show, or whatever. Having a firm understanding of the material, why people love these worlds and these characters and these stories and these moments so much, and finding a unique way to adapt them to whatever new medium you are adapting it to, while still being faithful and recognizable to the source material, a lot of the times it can be viewed as really important and significant. Look at the hype that has surrounded Henry Cavill's Warhammer, and we've only been announced that. We don't have anything else about that, but we know Henry Cavill loves Warhammer and understands that universe, so there's a rock-solid foundation, a base, if you will, of trust and support for that, because chances are, they are at least showing that they are trying to be faithful to Warhammer. But the same can't be said for Halo. Now, the action scenes, those were really cool from at least episode one of Halo Season 1. And the trailers for Season 2 at least look decent. But why is everyone getting hung up? Why are everyone getting hung up? on Master Chief not having this helmet, because it's an intrinsic, central aspect of the character of Master Chief. And the logic that is being used, well, quote-unquote logic being used to defend the idea of Chief not having his helmet, to me, in my opinion, shows a lack of foundational understanding of Halo. Now, why is that? Master Chief was always a self-insert protagonist, otherwise known as a character in a book or a show or a movie or a game, who may have some character by themselves, Master Chief has a ton in my opinion, but the primary vehicle for that character is for the viewer, the player, whoever, to self-insert into the universe and to experience that universe through the eyes of that key character. Master Chief was that for Halo. In the games, he largely didn't talk. He did talk on occasion, was funny, had banter, but he always felt like the machine. He always felt like the soldier. He was the Master Chief. And the logic being used to defend him taking his helmet off for the show is that, well, you can convey more human emotion in a more natural way by seeing an actual actor's head and face and facial expressions and all that. And the show is not going to cover only action moments like the game does, primarily, not even. We can get to that in a bit, but they want to show those more human moments with Master Chief. And if you are unfamiliar with Halo, you can hear that and say, okay, well, that makes some kind of sense. If you are really familiar with Halo, though, you will understand why this logic really falls apart. And down to a very simple reason, a misunderstanding of the character of Master Chief, and also pretending that human emotion can only be expressed through facial animation or expression. A lot of what made Chief so emotional and resonant and understandable and relatable was the fact that we never saw his face. We became emotional for the story of Halo because we experienced the emotions that Chief was largely feeling to some degree at that moment, because again, self-insert here. But also, we often were able to get a very vivid understanding of how Chief is feeling. Because body language is also of paramount importance when it comes to conveying emotion. Think back to, like, those Broadway shows or those ancient Greek sh 
theater shows, where chances are you're sitting rather far away from the actors, so you don't have access to seeing all those intricate, minute, facial expressional changes and differences. But at a distance, you can still gather that emotion because you can see the overall body language, those exaggerated forms. And while we are obviously far more up close and personal here, the main idea behind that metaphor or reference is not to say that Chief has to be like a theater kid, but that you can utilize body language as well as dialogue as methodologies to showcase the emotion of the scene and also of Chief. There's more emotion in the final scenes of Halo 4, in my opinion, than in most other games, books, and movies. All without Chief taking off his helmet, outside of the first, last few seconds of the legendary specific ending in which we only see his eyes. But the absolute stellar vocal performance of Steve Downs, as well as the animations of Master Chief as a whole, and the subtle changes to his expression, posture, and movements, are able to convey effective storytelling and emotional significance and gravitas without ever feeling the need to show Master Chief's face. Because the idea of Halo and Master Chief as a character, in the words of Actman, or at least paraphrasing here, is that we got to understand and know the character of Master Chief before we understood and grew to love John. What does that mean? Throughout the original Halo trilogy, Halo 1, 2, and 3, we learned about the Master Chief, the last beacon of hope for mankind in a world that seemingly doesn't want humanity to exist any longer, where the Flood and the Covenant forces rage an endless, gruesome battle against all. Master Chief stands there as the lone beacon of hope in that cold, endless darkness of space. And the reason the original trilogy has a story so beloved is because Master Chief is surrounded by a bunch of great characters. Sergeant Johnson, Cortana, Shipmaster, Gravemind, Tartarus, the Brutes, the Grunts, the Marines, Sergeant Johnson, I think I already said him though, Lasky in Halo 4, and 343 Guilty Spark. Master Chief is surrounded by a cast of characters that are so well-developed, fleshed out, and characterized that they are able, also Miranda Keys as well, they are able to convey those emotions, and the Prophets as well. There's even more characters. Those are the characters that are meant to showcase those facial expression moments of storytelling. Cortana was always a character that was supposed to be the human counterpart to Chief, who was the more mechanical soldier. He still felt emotion and all that, but the reason Cortana and Master Chief worked as characters was because they worked off of each other. Where one character lacked, the other brought to the table in spades. That's why they worked, and why they worked as partners so well in Halo. And when you wanted to go to the more emotional story that was Halo 4, that is more personal for Master Chief as he tries to find a way to save God Cortana from rampancy, a fate all AIs face, we are able to really start to care about him as an individual and unique character because we put ourselves in his shoes for so long that we started to actually care about him as a character. And all the main emotional moments of Halo 4 still has Chief with his helmet on. But again, excellent use of utilizing Cortana as a foil, or not foil, but as a counterpart, but also the dialogue and the voice acting and the overall body movements of Chief, working in synergy with one another to convey and elevate the scene. I hold the ending of Halo 4 in extremely high regard. It is one of the most well-crafted endings to a game outside of the final fight with the Didact that I've ever seen, all without the need of taking Chief's helmet off. Because when you try and argue that you have to take Chief's helmet off to showcase human emotion in a story that is Halo, that doesn't at least sound or feel like a necessity, it feels like an excuse. An excuse or a crutch that you are incapable of utilizing the emotional storytelling techniques that Halo was known for, either in a direct or indirect way, yet incapable of understanding those methodologies of conveying human emotion and story. And you are forced to resign yourself to have to utilize facial expression as a crutch or a bolster because you, no you don't have a firm understanding or ground-based support in the other methodologies that Halo was known for. You don't have a great supplementary cast of characters that Chief can bounce off of and utilize in a moment-to-moment -moment basis for comedic relief or emotion because no one cares about anyone else other than the Chief when it comes to this show. The biggest meme surrounding 
or at least word of mouth surrounding the Halo show Season 1 wasn't about how cool the action scenes could be on occasion, or how well written the characters are. No, it was about Chief having sex in front of Cortana, with a human covenant spy that feels wildly unnecessary and separate to what people wanted out of a Halo show. Having an opinion is all well and good. And there's no technically wrong opinion, but opinions can show the thought process happening underneath them, or the lack of understanding about something. And returning to an earlier point, the Halo games weren't always just action. They were a lot of action, but they weren't just action. The entire Arbiter story of Halo 2, which we clearly haven't gotten yet to in the show, but also think of Noble Team. How cool of a show would it have been if we had seen Halo Reach and Noble Team be translated to a show? We didn't get all that much development in Halo Reach, what if we slowed that down a little bit and expanded on those characters just a little bit? That would be really cool. The reason that Halo 4 was able to show Master Chief's face, which was still polarizing when it happened, by the way, was because we had so many other games and books up to that point where the books you'd never technically saw Chief's face because you read about it, you theorized what it looked like. But after all these books and little animations and games, it all culminates in us only seeing the eyes of Master Chief in a story all about Master Chief learning the difference between the man and the machine. Who is more human, he or Cortana? Who is more machine, him or her? And once he finally starts to understand what Cortana was always trying to tell him, then we see the eyes of Master Chief to signify that he's now no longer just a soldier or just a machine, because all that character development is finally starting to pay off for him. He is starting to recognize and accept the human side of things for him. You don't get that in the show because you take his helmet off so early. So that entire understanding, that entire overarching narrative for Master Chief, that entire character development arc is out the window, at least as it was told in the games. And we can bring up the Mandalorian, which to be fair also shows his face after a set period of time, but a lot of the reason people love the Mandalorian is not because the Mandalorian takes his mask off, we cared about him as a character before he even did that. Because body language and surrounding characters with great characters and having great dialogue, voice acting, cinematography, and all that, a great understanding and foundational base of storytelling etiquette and support and methodologies, will still end up with you having a good story. Now, I'm not too personally mad about Master Chief showing his head in, phase in Season 2. Like, I feel like it was already kind of ruined in Season 1, why not? But like, in the promotional lot at least, show the helmet. The helmet is the most iconic aspect of Master Chief. It just feels like this really weird reliance and allegiance to an idea that is not rooted in any kind of background or understanding of Halo. And when you're trying to tell a Halo story, and if you're trying to regain some lost fan support, at least showing an honest-to-God attempt and effort to understand the source material could go a long way. I hope Season 2 is good, I'm not going to root for it to be bad or anything, but when you show me the or the viewer more and more reasons to believe that you still don't understand the source material, that will color so many perceptions about what you eventually put out. Whether that's right or wrong, that is the reality of how things happen. I'm going to hope for the best, but if it turns out to be another stinker, I can't say I would be that surprised. And with that, I think I'll call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content. And I greatly appreciate it. Stay, stay safe. I'm getting the hiccups now, so I'm going to really call it there. Stay safe. Have a great day. And hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload and stream in the future. Stay safe. Have a great day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.